an interesting transition from that into then I guess the next thing was you began coaching. How did that get started? So I wrote a letter to Harry Hopman, who was in New York, Port Washington Tennis Academy at that time. And he said I could come whenever I wanted to. He didn't say that you need a working visa. I, he just said, just come whenever you want. <laughs> so I got a tourist visa, went to New York. I started to work under under him. Now, what were some of the um, the lessons that you picked up from Henry, Harry, Harry Hopman? <laughs> Actually, so, his name was Henry Christian Hopman. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, yeah, Harry, yes. And uh, the first thing he said, okay, you've got, and he was a great person, and I knew that he was sixty eight at the time. And I knew that it was a tremendous opportunity. At 20 years old, I was just turned 20, I would have uh, five years of learning ahead of other people who were playing. And so if they were coming. So I thought that 20 to 25 at least, I would be, uh, I'd be learning a lot. What did I learn from him? Well, there are a lot of lessons. Uh, the first thing was he said, okay, you have a, this is what your salary is, it's $200 a week, and these are the hours that you work. And I said, well, do I, and I calculated it to be $6.25 an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what happens if I work more? And he said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And that was it. It was a very short conversation. <laughs> but it was, it was, he said to me there, he said, go look, go watch Tony Palafox coach. Mm -hmm. You know, John McEnroe was there, Peter Fleming, Vetus, Gerolitis, Peter Rennert, Mary Carrillo. This is 1974 in mm. January. So this is in New York. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, all right. And so, what what did you pick up from watching Tony teaching, coaching? Well, I watched his technique, which was very good, because he was, I think, finals of Wimbledon with uh, Osuna, mm -hmm. Rafael Osuna. Just watching him teach and where they hit the ball. You know, they're doing two on one and things like that. Just watch the drills that they do. Then I was watching, and I call him Mister Hopman. That was it mm -hmm. <laughs> forever. He would come to the court when I had a group, and I started off with the weakest groups, but he would come, pick up the balls while he was doing the drill with the other three other players. And I would just watch what he was saying, listen to what he was saying, and watch what he was doing, and where he fed the ball, um, how he was positioning it. Yeah, and just then how he demonstrated to the players what way the technique was. And he would, you know, if it was a backhand volley that they did wrong, he would just in one second show, okay, the backhand volley's like this, and then he would feed the next ball. Being alert all the time was really important in my learning process. Okay, so would you say that the, that the principle at work there is the simplicity of a quick demonstration and then the expectation that on the next repetition that the player's going to, you know, better approximate that that execution? Oh yes, definitely. And when if you made a mistake, he would feed the next ball straight back to where that ball was. Mm -hmm. And then if you missed again, you know, he might say something, but he wouldn't he wouldn't say something straight away. He would just check to see if you were able to execute it properly on the second one so, or a third one, yeah. Uh, that's, that's interesting, and that's something that I've seen Wayne Bryan do um, with the Bryan brothers and, and talk about. Um, and so I think that's fascinating because it seems like, you know, that's, something where you're trusting the player to make an adjustment and discover their own solution, only intervening if they don't. Right. And he would put the ball in a position where it wasn't impossible to get, but it would it could be challenging. 
Mm-hmm. He would feed <laughs> the ball right on the line. Doesn't matter if it's a sideline or a, or the baseline, a lob. Um, he was very precise and he was challenging to get the ball, making you believe that you actually had a chance to get it. Quite often, coaches, what they do, and I'd been in, at um, Bardmore when I had been traveling, but I came back there and one of the coaches was in charge of a group of three and I was in there and he was just making the ball ridiculously difficult and fast and things like this. So you had no rhythm. Mm. Uh, whereas Mr. Hoffman, he, he was very precise, really had it, the rhythm that was necessary for the player. But by putting the ball to the sidelines and that, mm-hmm. It makes you aware of how far, and you learn to move to get that ball. That's very interesting. So, so I guess the objective is to is to improve the player's confidence in what they're able to achieve on the court. He was really good with that. He made you believe that you could do it. He wouldn't make you feel foolish. Uh, and I think just his comments were very simple. He might even tell a story about a player, hmm. you know, Hode or Rosewall or Laver or Emerson, all these sort of players. He might just tell a story about something that makes you then conscious of the various things that they did. So you feel that, oh, this is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And then, and then vicariously, I guess people tune into the idea that that these are timeless principles and they're, they themselves are associated with the play, the greatness of those players. Yes. And, you know, what is amazing that he had such a vision, you know, for what players can be, what he, first of all, what you need to do to really improve, to be a better player, what skill set you need to have. That's why he's the one who started the two-on-one drills. You know, you've always got that ball come back when it's two, and then he's got people at the net. He had a very good understanding, I mean, a way of describing having your baseline game, your transition game, your finishing game around the net, and what you need to do to so that you have qualities that can finish the point. 